I was feeling sad recently, and I thought the remedy for my sadness would be to buy the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I gotta say, I really see why they call it Pro. It does make you seem more professional. You take calls on it. Hello! Well, I'm pretty busy right now. I'm in a meeting. Well, I got another meeting later today. It's pretty good, right? It really makes you seem like you know what you're talking about. Everybody knows that the iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max, whatever, doesn't really have a whole lot to offer over the previous iPhone. And that one didn't really have a whole lot to offer over the previous iPhone either. I have the iPhone 14 Pro, and then I decided for some reason to upgrade to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Let's not lie, these two phones are almost exactly the same. Apple, in their marketing, has tried to make it seem like this is the craziest phone of all time. But there's one thing about the iPhone 15 Pro that Apple has actually understated. The chip inside it is the most advanced microprocessor mankind has ever made. And it's going not into some military technology, it's going not into some crazy James Bond shit. It's going into a consumer product that you see on billboards everywhere. Apple has made some claims about the processor. They do claim that it's a really like the most advanced processor ever in a smartphone, etc. But in my opinion, they're still underselling how crazy this processor is. In their marketing, they talk about how the, the processor in this iPhone uses three nanometer transistors. This is the industry's first three nanometer chip. And that's true. What they don't say is that this device is the only device ever made in the history of mankind that uses three nanometer transistors in its processor. Let's talk a little bit about how crazy this is. If you've ever heard of Moore's Law, Moore's Law is a prediction by a guy named Gordon Moore, an engineer who started at Fairchild Semiconductor and then went on to found Intel. What Gordon Moore predicted is that every two years, the transistors inside of chips would get smaller by half. And every two years later, they'd get smaller by half again. And two years later, they'd get smaller. That is an exponential process through which transistors get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And, smaller. and from like the 1950s, 1960s until today, transistors have gotten many orders of magnitude smaller to the point we measure their dimensions in atoms. Elements of these transistors are just over 12 silicon atoms wide. And people don't really think they're gonna be able to get that much smaller and Moore's law is starting to break down. If you don't know what a transistor is, don't worry about it too much. It's basically just a switch that signals it's on or it's off. On or off. In the code, on is a one and off is a zero. So you, see, you know how computer code is all ones and zeros. It just means, is it on or is it off? On or off. It's very simple. But when you have hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of transistors. 19 billion of these transistors. You could do very complex things like make videos or whatever. There are two reasons we want transistors to be smaller. One is so you can pack more of them into a single chip and therefore make that chip more capable of processing more complex things. And the second reason is that when transistors get smaller, they also become more power efficient. So that chip which is now packed with more transistors than the previous generation, uses about the same amount of power. Every time you make transistors smaller, it means the chip can do more complex computation and also be more power efficient. It's just a win-win. The way transistors are made is through lithography. You print the transistors onto a silicon wafer. These three nanometer transistors are patterned using state-of-the-art extreme ultraviolet lithography. The problem comes is that as transistors have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller, so, 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 so tiny that Apple now claims with the three nanometer transistor you can fit two million of them in the width of a human hair. Three nanometer technology creates transistors that are so small you could fit two million of them in the cross section of a human hair. There's like a human hair right here. The manufacturing process also became exponentially more complex. In the beginning of Silicon Valley, there were sort of two companies that were leading the charge and making transistors. There were Fairchild Semiconductor and Texas Instruments. In the 80s, as manufacturing chips was becoming increasingly complex, 
a new company came online called Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC for short, was founded by a guy named Morris Chang, who was originally from China, moved to the United States to be a student at MIT, then was an influential person at Texas Instruments, and then in the mid-late 80s, realized that manufacturing chips and the process of making transistors smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller was becoming so complex that he thought there was a new market for a company that specialized just in manufacturing chips. They didn't design chips, they didn't make any other electronics. All they did was manufacture chips for other companies that were designing them. And today, that company, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, makes the most advanced chips in the world. TSMC has a lot of famous clients. They make the most advanced chips in the world for a lot of the most advanced tech companies in the world. Companies like Nvidia and Tesla, they both make their own chips, but they actually have TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, manufacture them for them because TSMC's level of expertise is unmatched. That level of expertise is so difficult to replace that Morris Chang, who is now in his 90s, is still the president of the company, still working. See if you can guess who TSMC's biggest client is, their most important client. It's Apple. Apple has become such a big company. They're so rich. They have so much economic clout that they have literally booked out TSMC's entire production line for making three nanometer chips using extreme ultraviolet lithography for the iPhone 15 Pro and Apple's M3 chip and their new laptops. They are the first chips for a personal computer built using the industry leading three nanometer technology. In the beginning of Silicon Valley in like the 1960s, 1950s, even into the 70s, the primary customer buying microprocessors, the most important customer as far as the industry was concerned, was the United States government. The United States government wanted chips to make superior weapons. But as personal computing and consumer electronics grew as an industry, over time, the United States government stopped being the most important customer to the industry. But today, the United States government still thinks that their military advantage is centered on having superior tech over any of their rivals and their primary rival these days is china the reason that the united states government is so concerned about china invading taiwan is because this one company tsmc has their entire production line where they make the most advanced chips in the world located on the island of taiwan and they don't want that production line to fall into the hands of the chinese government where theoretically they could then start building more advanced weapons. This is where the iPhone 15 comes in, and it's just particularly crazy. This production line, which the United States and China are at odds over, the production line that is making the most advanced microprocessor chips in the world, the ones using the smallest transistors ever, are not being used by the United States government or the Chinese government. The most advanced microprocessors are going into the iPhone 15 Pro first and then Apple's M3 line before they're going to anybody else. That's insane. This video is not me talking out of my ass. I read this book called Chip War, The Fight for the World's Most Critical Technology. It's by this guy named Chris Miller who is a professor at Tufts University outside of Boston. I recommend it to you if you're interested in learning more about this topic and how complex chip making has become. Before I made this video, I wanted to make sure I had my facts right, so I emailed the author, Chris Miller, and asked him, earlier this year I read Chip War and loved it. I heard that the iPhone 15 Pro release today is using TSMC's three nanometer standard the smallest transistors ever made, and that Apple has booked all TSMC's three nanometer production capacity for the latest iPhone. I find it both strange and somewhat amusing that this one company, which according to your book, is at the heart of all US-China tension over Taiwan, is pouring all of their most cutting edge tech, not into any military technology, but into one of the most hyped consumer products. And I asked him, do you think that is the correct interpretation of what is going on? And he replied to me, and he said, Dear Will, that's correct. Apple is generally the primary buyer of TSMC's most advanced chips for iPhones. I appreciate the invitation to do an interview, but I'm afraid I've got too much on my plate. Sorry about that. Check it out. Oh my God. 
It still works. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.